At this time, if our sergeant in arms could start their recordings, please. Peace recording started. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to today's Democrat conference hearing. Uh, if you could all, again, once again, turn your videos on so we can verify everyone in the room. And we ask you to please silence all electronic devices at this time. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Speaker, we are ready to begin. Thank you, everyone. I hope everyone is uh, doing well and your families are safe and healthy. I want to turn it over to the majority leader. Uh, Laura, you're on mute. Welcome to this meeting of the New York City Council's Democratic Conference. My name is Lori Cumbo and I am the majority leader of the New York City Council. We are here today to consider a candidate for appointment as a Democratic Commissioner of Elections for Kings County. The Brooklyn County Party submitted a certificate of nomination for Rodney L. Pepe Souvenir Esquire for this appointment. This position is to fill a vacancy created when John Flateau resigned as a Democratic Commissioner of Elections for Kings County on January 30th, 2020. Pursuant to New York election law section 3-2045, the Kings County Democratic Party had 45 days to submit a certificate of party recommendation after the vacancy took place. Here, the Kings County Democratic Party did not file a proper certificate of recommendation within the statutory period. Therefore, according to New York election law, section 3-2044, we as the members of the New York City Council who are members of the Democratic Party may appoint an eligible person to fill this vacancy. Eligibility requirements are limited to being a registered Democrat, and a resident of the county for which the person is nominated for appointment. The person appointed will fill the remainder of a four year term expiring December 31st, 2020. Commissioners receive a $300 per diem for each day of attendance at BOE meetings or any of its committees with a maximum of $30,000 per year. Since Ms. Pepe Souvenir was put forward by the Brooklyn delegation of the New York City Council, she was subject to a full background investigation. No adverse information, conflicts of interest, or compatibility of office concerns were identified. Ms. Pepe Souvenir is a registered Democrat and a resident of Kings County, so she meets the eligibility criteria. Today's meeting will be governed by Robert's Rules of Order. Would any council members like to be recognized? Madam Majority Leader? Yes. Council Member Traeger wishes to be recognized. I recognize Council uh, Member Mark Traeger, the co-chair of the Brooklyn delegation. Uh, thank you to the Majority Leader. Thank you to the speaker and my colleagues. Um, the one point of just uh, also information that uh, Ms. Souvenir's name was submitted as mentioned earlier to the city council, as mentioned on the June 30th stated meeting agenda. Um, I wanna just mention that in addition to the fact that uh, we are still uh, through a pandemic and a lot of challenges in our city, there was also a transition of power within the Brooklyn Democratic Party uh, this year as well. Um, and I, I just wanna speak to the fact, I know some of my colleagues have questions, very valid questions, but I just wanna say this um, from, from my piece. Um, I have reviewed uh, carefully Ms. Souvenir's resume. Uh, I had a very long and good conversation with Chuck Davis, who I think the world of, and I think many of my colleagues as well. Um, her resume is powerful. Um, it is strong. Uh, she is a Title IX coordinator in CUNY, which is a very vital position that many of us have fought for uh, in the school system and in other uh, public institutions. Um, she has a background in equal opportunity work. 
in various levels of government, uh, a law degree from Cardozo and someone who really just speaks to, I think, a, a point of, of just compliance and respect and dignity. And quite frankly, I think the Board of Elections uh, certainly needs a, a lot more folks with that with that level of expertise and, and qualifications. And again, um, this year has been challenging. There is no question that a lot of things are, are very different. And But I am just going to speak to the fact that I have reviewed her resume. It is strong. I had a conversation with Ms. Souvenir. I had a long conversation uh, with Chuck Davis. I know some of my colleagues have their views and I want, I want us to obviously to, to hear folks out and, and to respect folks' voices and views on this. But I believe that she is more than qualified uh, for, for this position. Um, and actually, uh, I think many of us are, are indebted to folks like Ms. Souvenir who has served this city well effectively and whose uh, really resume has been impeccable. And if, if Chuck Davis could speak for a moment to, I think it's important for members to hear the, the, uh, the outcome of his vetting and background research of her, uh, of her resume and of her background information. Chuck, can you speak to that, please? Well, yes, we conducted a full background investigation on Ms. Pep Souvenir. Um, we verified what was listed on her resume. We found no conflicts of interest, no compatibility of office interests, or anything outstanding or anything adverse in her background investigation. And the background investigation was conducted well over one month ago. Thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Chuck. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you, are there a, other Con members? Council Member Traeger, are you making a motion or, or did you just wanna speak? Well, I, I wanted to share that uh, I have reviewed her information um, and, and I, I am in support of the nomination. Okay, Majority Leader Cumbo. The council next council member who would like to speak is Council Member Barron. Okay, thank you, Council Member Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good to see all my colleagues. Hope everybody's doing well. I have lots of issues, lots of questions, and lots of concerns about what we are doing. I got a text a few minutes ago, maybe an hour ago, from the candidate saying that she would like to speak to me. That would be fine. Why? wasn't the candidate invited to come to the Brooklyn delegation to present herself so that those of us who don't know her would have an opportunity to not just review the resume, that's fine. I'm not questioning what's on paper. Glad to know that she's superlative on paper. I would like to have heard from the candidate, what are her plans, particularly at this time when we know that Thousands of people had their votes disqualified through the, uh, through, the vac through the absentee and the mail-ins. What are her plans? Does she see that as an issue? Does she have any idea about how that can be corrected in the next three months before we get to November? I have no idea of what it is that this candidate would like to offer as her platform for what she would like to do. When Dr. John Flatteau was named, and it's someone that I've known for over 40 years, he came before the body and had an extensive interview and was questioned by the body because we have legitimate concerns about what are your plans. I don't think we should be dismissive to say, oh, it's only six months. I think we need to set a clear tone that particularly at this time of the general climate where people are being disenfranchised, that we have a candidate who comes before us on the record to the full body and presents what she sees as uh, her platform so that we can be assured that that's what her plan is moving forward and that there's some accountability at the end of that time as to how far she was able to achieve those objectives that she set for herself. I think that, I don't know if she asked for an interview 
or I mean, if she asked for a presentation to the body, I don't know if the body reached out to her. Those of us who have those timelines and understand what it is that's required, did we reach out to her? Was there some other reason that the candidate did not come? I have a lot of questions. I'm not willing to cast a vote for someone for such an important position, even though it's only six months without knowing what that person plans to do. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Are there other members at this time who wish to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Reynoso would like to speak. Thank you for a point of clarification, uh, Mr. Parliamentarian. Uh, when did the Brooklyn delegation submit this nomination to the City Council? One moment, please, Council Member. The certificate is dated June 13th, 2020, and it was stamped received by the Office of the City Clerk on June 25th, 2020. By who signed it? And I guess who in the Brooklyn delegation forwarded this to the City Clerk? Uh, the certificate is signed by Carlo Cicera, Chair of the Kings County Democratic County Committee. Yeah, I understand that. You, in their opening statement, said it was forwarded to you by the Brooklyn delegation. I'm assuming the Brooklyn delegation is the council members of the of Brooklyn County, not, not the members of the Brooklyn party, or was that a misstatement by, by you? Uh, I'm sorry, council member, that, that may have been a misstatement. The certificate is signed not by the delegation, but by the county party. Okay, thank you very much. And in your, and just uh, more questions, uh, Mr. Parliamentary, uh, the Brooklyn delegation does not need to forward uh, or recommend this person uh, for consideration by the Democratic Conference. Correct. The Democratic Conference is not bound by the certificate that it received from the county party because the certificate was not timely. Thank you. Uh, so uh, to all my colleagues, um, I'm so nice to see you. I'm so glad you're here. I wanna start off by stating that uh, my statement and my regards for what's happening here uh, is separate aside from the candidate herself. Um, from what I've noticed in her resume, she seems to be an extremely qualified person. I have no relationship with her. I've never talked to her. I was never asked to set up a meeting to allow for her to present in front of the Brooklyn delegation. Uh, other candidates and other uh, in these positions from other from other uh, I'm sorry uh, boroughs have gone through the committee on rules privileges and elections and were vetted to some degree by council members. This didn't happen here. I got notice of this candidate officially on Monday at about 3:30, and I'm now asked being asked to vote. Uh, on somebody from a very important position. So I just wanted to read something that I, I just kind of put together right now. We're about to embark arguably on the most important election of our lifetime. This election will account for the largest absentee ballot operation ever in the city of New York. Our board of elections has yet to finalize the counting and calling of many local elections almost a month after primary day. The dysfunction of the board of elections is no secret to the countless council members that are sitting here in this democratic conference that constantly uh, over that do their work to oversee and hold accountable the executive director on a regular basis. These council members in this body are very well aware of the dysfunction of the board of elections. But we continue to allow for business as usual in regards to the process that appoints members to these positions. The process that allows for counties to make recommendation and not have to go through any local process, any formal process of educating oneself about who these candidates are by council members, and then using our authority 
our authority to put this person in place with practically no vetting happening by the large, the larger body and by even the Brooklyn delegation who has yet to meet this person. This candidate should go through a democratic process that allows for transparency so the public could see who will be representing them. There's no reason why we cannot hold, vote, hold this vote back, allow for this candidate to go through a process that has existed um, uh, internally here in the city council that has allowed for the rules, privileges, and elections to bring this person in, allow for Brooklyn members to meet this person, um, who I see as extremely qualified. But if we keep allowing for these processes to be the processes by which we are appointing people, then what we're doing is uh, criticizing the Board of Elections without helping it. This person is about to go to the Board of Elections with many people under her that have been appointed as well that are underqualified. We're asking these people to turn around an uh, a agency in the city of New York without giving them any help, not looking for talent, not looking for people that are extremely capable, not looking for bureaucrats, but instead political appointments. And we're asking political appointees to fix this problem of elections that we have in the city of New York. That is an unfair request being made by the city council in light of the fact that we appoint these people through, through, with, no, with no communication to council members. And it is our vote. You're gonna vote on someone you've never met, you've never heard of. All you have is their resume that you probably received less than two days ago. I think we should think about postponing this vote, allowing for her to come before the Brooklyn delegation, rules, privileges, and elections committee, and then proceeding with a vote. And I, I feel confident in looking at her resume that she will do very well through that process. But the process is ex extremely important. The means, does, the ends does not justify the means in this case. And I would actually like parliamentarian to make a motion that we suspend this vote until we're allowed to go through the proper process that allows for us uh, to educate and inform ourselves about who exactly we're going to be appointing to an extremely important position of our time. I'd like to second that. Well, that was the first thing we needed was a second. Madam Majority Leader, there's a motion on the floor to suspend. Council Member Reynoso, would you be willing to call it a, a motion to recess? Yes, uh, I would like to call a motion to recess. So uh, Madam Majority Leader, there is a motion to recess this meeting until um, a later point in time. Council Member Reynoso, is there a particular point in time that you would like to recess the meeting to in your motion? For me, is as fast as we can get her in front of the Brooklyn delegation and to the Rules, Privileges, and Elections Committee. If we can do that in two weeks, then I want it in two weeks. As long as those two steps are taken, I think that's a reasonable request and something that would allow us to, to ensure that the best candidate is, is being pushed for. Okay. So, Madam Majority Leader, the motion on the floor is to recess this meeting until such time as the Brooklyn delegation has had an opportunity to meet with the candidate uh, and the candidate has gone through the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections. As a point of parliamentary clarification, uh, candidates for the Board of Elections typically do not go through the Committee on Rules, Privileges and Elections. They go directly to the Democratic or Republican conference, but we can certainly uh, decide exactly what the procedure will be later. The the motion on the floor right now is a motion for recess. Mr. Parliamentarian, I think what you, you stated an opinion, I, I disagree with you. In the city council, we put forth a, a practice to allow for these candidates to be vetted by delegations. And I would ask any other delegation that has their board of elections representative, uh, the Manhattan delegation was able to meet with their member the Staten Island delegation was able to meet with their member. The Queens delegation was Council able to meet with their member. Stuff? No, one second, James. Okay. My, my The main thing that I'm trying to make here is that I agree, by state law, we're not breaking any rules. But I wanted to be clear that we've internally put a process that is more transparent and more democratic so that we can do better when we're electing these folks. So I just wanted to make sure that we clarify that while state law allows us to move forward with this meeting as is, that we internally we're doing better. We, we've been doing better for a long time. And for it to just go away right now um, is, is something that is not acceptable. And I would also uh, ask my colleagues from other, from other boroughs, 
you've got your opportunity to vet your people in a reasonable way. You've got an opportunity to meet them. As a Brooklyn member, I just want to be able to sit in front of this person, ask basic questions, and then and, and then possibly move on. Uh, so I'm, I'm asking for, for you to allow us to just do that. And I hope that is a reasonable request. I think if I could just jump in for one second, I think, you know, this, this group here, I don't th know if it's appropriate for us to decide what goes before a delegation or not, but I'm, I'm not going to weigh in one way or another on that. But what I do want to say is this is not a council appointee, so it wouldn't go to the rules committee. Uh, this bringing this appointee to the caucus is a substitute or the conference is a substitute essentially for the rules committee because rather than being an, a, a council appointee, it is a democratic conference appointee. So I just wanted to weigh in on the second part of, of what you asked for, Council Member Reno. So I'm not thank speaking you, as to the delegation part. Not, thank you, James. And so remember, I just want to be clear. We've, we've done that process though. It, even though it is not a formal process that needs to happen, we have vetted previous candidates through the Rules, Privileges and Elections Committee. Am I, am I incorrect in saying that? And if I am incorrect, then I think it's, it suffices me to just have her come before the Brooklyn delegation, which I think could, could be satisfactory. But uh, for my time, I guess, or maybe I I'm incorrect, I thought they went through the Rules, Privileges and Elections Committee. I remember the Bronx candidate going to the Rules, Privileges and Elections Committee. So if you want to clarify, James, that uh, I would love it uh, and I would be more than happy to change my motion um, if, if I get clarification. Okay, no, let, let's get clarity on this from the person who knows best who is probably Chuck and Lance. Yes. But I believe if excuse the certificate- me Jim, excuse yes. me one moment. I've been asked to uh, pause the meeting just to make sure that we're following um, parliamentary procedure and that we're moving forward accordingly okay. um, with this motion. So give us a moment to pause um, just to make sure that we're following the right guidelines according to this particular uh, style of meeting in the Democratic Conference. Of course, Madam Majority Leader. The meeting will stand at ease. Councilmember Reynoso, are you there? Yes, Speaker. So it's my understanding that the uh, other um, nominations for other delegations did not go to the Rules Committee, but uh, did go to delegations if those delegations chose to have uh, those nominees come before them to have a discussion as you outlined and as Councilmember Barron uh, mm -hmm. outlined I would just say, I would. I think that's appropriate. And uh, if there was not the opportunity to do that, given that we were in the middle of a, a budget, and given that there was a transition in the Brooklyn Democratic uh, Party, uh, I think it would be appropriate to find out a, a reasonable timeline 
uh, for this nominee to come and meet with the members of the Brooklyn delegation, as you and Councilor Barron just outlined, to have that discussion and for us to come back at the appropriate time after the delegation has had the opportunity to have a open discussion. It sounds like from what Councilor Barron mentioned uh, when she spoke earlier that this nominee, who, who I don't know, I haven't spoken to her, I've never met her, uh, but it sounds like she is reaching out to have those conversations. So it sounds like it would be appropriate to have that in the forum of the delegation uh, to be able to do that. So I'm not sure what we need to vote. I mean, we can, if, if you want, on your, on your motion. I think it would just be better for us to say here today, the council's gonna instruct the nominee to do that. We're gonna say, go meet with the Brooklyn delegation. Uh, and once the Brooklyn delegation can set up a meeting, uh, have a conversation, then we can figure out when and if it's appropriate to come back to democratic conference after that happens. Yeah, I think that's fair. Thank you so much, speaker. I think that's exactly what I'm asking for. Great. So I, I, I think that's what we should do. Uh, other delegations have done that in the past. I think it makes sense to do that here. And uh, Mr. Maybe, Speaker, yes. an, an easy way to do that procedurally would be to ask for unanimous consent. Do I have unanimous consent for us to take that route that we instruct the nominee that they have to go meet with the Brooklyn delegation? I. Aye. 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 Anyone object Aye. to that? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. So uh, we're going to do it that Wait, way. Um, um, Mr. Speaker, I just want to ask, is there any time constraint that we may be missing? No. By doing not. that? There's okay. no time constraint. We have time. That's why I think it makes sense to do it this way. Uh, and Chuck <laughs> Davis will assist the Brooklyn delegation and setting up a meeting with this individual in a timely manner to be able to have that discussion. So no. Um, Mr. Speaker, the only time constraint that um, might be impacted is that they have to get everything ready for um, the November vote. And, and so um, I would ask that we would um, try to get this resolved quickly as possible because there's a lot of moving parts to the November election. Yeah, we will, we will try to do this in an expeditious manner. After we hang up today, Chuck Davis will reach out to the nominee and to the co-chairs of the Brooklyn delegation that are trying to find a time for next week or the following week to actually have that meeting with the delegation to do it in an expeditious manner. Okay, so uh, that's that. Um, thank you all very much. And we are going to uh, now move into Democratic Conference. So, Joanna, if you could let us know. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, can you take us off the live, please? <laughs>